body by the self. Exercise one, we are observing the self by the self. Now we are observing the body by the self. We are also observing the interaction that is taking place between the body and the self. And all this observation is done by the self. So this is one thing. Second thing is this note that we have already talked about in exercise one, that the steps that we are going to talk about in this exercise two are not the only steps. Right? There are one set of steps which are useful for us looking at our condition of this self today. So looking at the condition of you know our state of being individually and collectively we have tried to work out these steps but they are not the steps which are sacrosanct that they are the only steps. No, this is one way of looking at things and you know a set of steps that we have designed looking at our state of being and that they can be made more detailed or more brief depending upon you know the development that is taking place at our own level so with that let me come to exercise one step, exercise two is step one so till now we have been exploring about human being under the foundation course on EHB. Some of the important aspects which relate to this to our work in exercise two is recalled here for ready reference. So something that we already talked about in EHB one, we will try to recall it, you know, and then in the context of that, we will start you know observing the interaction with the body you know, of the self right so that we would do in the context of some of these things that we are trying to recall now so if you look at this slide now we have been talking about human being as coexistence of self and body so when we look at ourselves when we look at the human being it is not just the body as we used to assume before it is coexistence of self and body right and this coexistence and these two different, you know, uh, kind of uh, reality, the self and the body can be understood is in terms of the need, in terms of the activity, and in terms of the response. Right. So today I will not go into the details, but uh, we have already talked about this in USB one quite detail, and many of you have done many workshops. You know, ESB1, as somebody was studying that six, seven times he has done, and it is worth doing. So, uh, this human being is coexistence of self and body. The need of the self is different from the need of the body, and therefore its fulfillment is also different. The activity of the self is different from the activity of the body, and the response of the self is different from the response of the body. And that is how we can see that these are two different things. Right? And they are in coexistence. And in coexistence of self and body, what we are able to see is the human being. So this is one observation that we made. And this self is the world of consciousness. This body is the world of material. This is what we have observed in EHB1 many times. And we have been reflect, been we have been must have been reflecting on it so this is one set of information the second set of information that we have from php1 is that this human being who is coexistence of self and body now if i look at this self and body right the transaction between the self and body is in terms of information in terms of information in the sense that I am giving some instruction to the body and I am reading some sensation from the body. So if there is a sensation in the body, you know that there is, it is feeling hungry. So you observe that sensation and on the basis of that observation, you make some conclusion at the level of self and you decide to give food to the body 
So you are asking the body to move to the kitchen, take out a plate, you know, put some food on it, right? Take out that food with some spoon, you know, put it in your mouth, and all those instructions you are giving, and the body is doing as per your instruction. So basically, the transaction between the self and body is in the form of information, which is in the form of self giving some instruction to the body and the self reading some sensation from the body. So this we had talked about in uh, ESB1. So with this background, I will just initiate, start this process you know, of step one. I can come back to the detailing of it tomorrow. Yesterday, uh, tomorrow when uh, I begin this session in the morning, Today I'm not going into the details because uh, there is no time left. We are already running 10 minutes over the time. So <clears throat> let me just uh, start with this step one of exercise two in the context of this information that we have from ESG1. So in step exercise two again, we have seven steps that we will talk about one by one. So let's look at this step one. Observing the self and the body by the self. This is step one. So we are making the following important observations about the self and the body. Right. So let's look at this. I am looking at myself and I am saying that I am. Right. And I am saying this on the basis of observing my activities on the basis of observing my imagination that we have been doing in exercise one. So in all these seven steps of exercise one, we have been trying to observe the self by observing the imagination of the self and observing the higher activities of the self. Right. This is what we have been doing all these 10, 11 days. And the outcome of this is that self is a reality. It exists, it exists in, in, as an existential reality. So this is simple to observe because this is what we have been observing for all these 10 days. That the self is there, right? The activities of the self are there. I can observe those activities activity of desire, thought, expectation. All those activities are going on in the self. So I can observe those activities. I can observe the imagination. And from there, I am able to see myself as an entity, as a reality, as an existential reality. So that is one thing that we are now trying to look at, you know, step one of exercise two. Now, the second part is, I am now trying to see that the body is. Body is also there, body is also a reality, body also exists, and it exists as an existential reality. Now, how do I look at the body? How do I see that the body is there? <laughs> So for example, I see the body by seeing the body through my eyes. So I can see the shape of the body or size of the body or color of the body. So that is how I decide that the body is there. Now this, <coughs> means that I am seeing the body through my sensation of sight. I am seeing some form through the eyes. Right, so there is some information from through the eyes from the sight of the body. Now, suppose you have closed your eyes. Can you still see that the body is there? Can you still see that the body is there 
even when your eyes are closed and you cannot see the shape or size of the body through eyes. So the answer is yes. I can still see that the body is there by observing some sensation from the body. Right? Somewhere I am feeling pain, somewhere I am feeling heaviness, somewhere I am feeling lightness, somewhere I am feeling itching. All these sensations are there. And by observing this sensation, I can conclude that the body is there even if I am not able to see it through my eyes because my eyes are closed. So this second observation that the body is is confirmed by observing or reading the sensation from the body. So how do I confirm that the body is there? By reading some sensation from the body. It can be a sensation of sight when my eyes are open. Right? It can be a sensation of pain. Right? It can be a sensation of some smell. So all those sensations could be there. And through this sensation, I am able to deduce that yes, the body is also there. So two realities, number one, I am, number two, the body is, I am, I can see by observing my imagination, my activities of the self. The body is, I can observe by observing the activity, observing the sensation from the body, which I am reading, which the self is reading. So that means I can observe these two realities, the self and the body, and they are both existential reality, right? They exist, whether I'm observing them or not observing them. When I observe them, I can see them, right, as they're there. When I'm not observing them, still they are there, and they are two different kinds of reality. And I can see both of them. I can see the self by observing the activity of the self, the imagination in the self. I can also see that the body is there by way of reading some sensation from the body. So the conclusion of this exercise two, step one, is that the self and body are two distinct realities. Right? The self and body are two distinct realities. and I am able to observe this. So this is what we have to do in exercise two, step one. Very simple to, thing to do, very important thing to do. So let's work with this exercise two, step one. If there is any clarification required on this, you can please ask, right? And then we'll continue to work with this and move on to the Hindi session. <laughs> 